What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking all about sneakers and we compare price versus quality. Let's get started. So if it looks like I'm in a new setting, it's because I am in a new setting. Like I told you guys before, and if you don't already know, I am in a new apartment. So if you're new here, I explained before how I moved from a three bedroom and now I'm in a one bedroom apartment by myself. Still in the same area, still in the same building, just moved to a new apartment. So I'll have to show you guys a full apartment tour another time. Before we jump into this video, I also wanna remind you guys to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. You wanna hit that subscribe button because we have huge things coming to this channel in 2018. So hit that subscribe button and you can be a part of it. Again, it's that big red button right below. It goes a long way for us YouTubers and it really, really helps me out. So hit that subscribe button, go click it. It helps me out, I really appreciate it. Fam, I love you. So like I said in the intro today, we are gonna be comparing price versus quality across sneakers. So I'm gonna show you sneakers that range from $15 all the way up to $600. So it's gonna be a good video. It's gonna be very interesting to see if these sneakers are worth the price that they are set at. Also, I wanna let you know, we're only gonna be talking about resale value. So some shoes we're gonna be talking about retail, but for the majority of them, we are gonna be talking about resale value because that's what you would have to pay for them if you wanted to get them right now. Okay. All right, the first sneaker up and the cheapest sneaker on our list is the leather lace-up sneaker from H&M. I'm only gonna hold up one because it's too much work to hold up two. I'm sure you can understand. But these shoes are priced at $15 retail value. So this is one shoe that we're gonna be examining at retail value versus the other ones, which we'll be talking about resale. And the reason for that is because these aren't gonna go out of stock. You can get these at pretty much any time. So let's go over the details of the shoe. Obviously, these being priced at $15 means that this is not real leather. This is faux leather all the way around. This is faux suede on the back right here. These laces are just regular white laces that you could get on any normal pair of shoes. The inside lining is just, it's not very padded at all. It's, again, this is a very, plain and a very basic sneaker. And it's really constructed in a way to utilize the bare minimum of all of the materials that the shoe is made of. Like the sole is not very thick at all. And you can see that it's already starting to crack right there on the side. And then since this is faux leather, it is creasing up all over the place on the shoe and the toe box on the sides right here. But for $15, this really is not a bad buy at all. These look really, really clean. When you put them on with chinos, they look great with jeans that are cuffed at the ankle. This is a great year round shoe. This is a great everyday sneaker. So to compare price versus quality on the H&M faux leather sneakers, I would rate these a four out of 10, just because they are $15, so they're ridiculously cheap. And the quality isn't terrible, but it could be a little bit better. All right, next up on our list, we have the Checkered Vans. So if you guys checked out my Christmas pickups video, and I'll link that right there, um, I did show these sneakers in that video as well, but I'm gonna talk about them in a little bit more detail here. So, these sneakers retail for $75, but I didn't pay $75 for them. When I went to the van store and got these, they were running a promotion. It was like, you spent $70 or more um, on that particular day, you got 30% off. So these ended up being $49 instead of $75. I don't know if that adds up correctly. And these aren't the normal checkered vans either. These are the pros, I think, yeah. These are the authentic pros. And then they also have this new insole right here. Let me pull it out for you so you can see. So this is van sort of new insole. It's called the Ultra Kush HD. And compared to a regular pair of vans, with this insole, it's just way, way more comfortable. So I noticed that immediately when I tried on this sneaker. And another thing that I loved about this sneaker as well is that the checkerboard is not black. The checkerboard on here is navy. It looks a lot more clean. It goes with a lot more than just regular black, I think. And then it also came with these off-white laces here or these marshmallow colored laces. Everybody knows how long a pair of Vans will last you. They will literally last you for years if you take care of them correctly. So to compare price versus quality on the checkered Vans, for $49 after the discount that I paid, I would rate these an eight out of 10 
because Vans are classic. Vans are never, ever, ever not in style, and they are ridiculous ridiculously cheap. And I would go as far as to say that Vans are pretty much the best bang for your buck when it comes to purchasing sneakers. All right, and now we're gonna be moving into sneakers that are in the reselling territory. And next up, we got the Aniki Runners. If you guys haven't already, you should definitely check out my last video where I reviewed these sneakers and showed you an on-feet look. That will be linked for you to check out in the description. But the price of these at resale value in my size is $145 according to the GOAT app. So, I did not pay that much for them. I paid less for them, but again, this is a sneaker that you could resell if you really wanted to, so that's why we're gonna be talking about resale price. Again, to quickly go over these shoes one more time, there are a ton of materials that go into the making of this shoe. Everything from suede, leather, neoprene, mesh, and boost on the bottom. Like, this is such a crazy, crazy quality sneaker. I love the shape, I love the comfort level, and this is honestly probably one of my favorite runners that I've ever owned in my life. Because it's sort of a runner, but in, in my opinion, it actually sort of reminds me of a dad shoe. That's, that's sort of the reason why I picked them up. And I know the dad shoe movement is like huge in 2018, especially because you got the Yeezy 700 Wave Runners, you have the Balenciaga, um, whatever those things are, they're freaking crazy. But this shoe sort of reminds me of those shoes in a way. Um, just the shape of it and the whole look of it in general kind of reminds me of a, a dad shoe or a, a dad runner, I guess you would call them. So let's talk about the comfort of this shoe. Obviously it has boost all the way around the entire sole, so it's going to be ridiculously comfortable. I would compare the comfort level of these to an NMD. I would say that these might be a touch more comfortable because they don't have those bricks on the sides that sort of um, stiffen up the boost, whereas these don't have anything, it's just boost all the way through. Wearability, these can be worn um, with pretty much anything. They're gray, they go with a lot. They look great with black jeans, they look great with blue. They look great with even like khaki or red track pants or joggers, I think. So this is a great shoe. To compare price versus quality on the Adidas Aniki Runner, I would rate these a seven out of 10. Just based on the resale value, $145 is kind of steep for these, but it's not too bad and then the quality of this sneaker is just absolutely unreal. All right, and to step away from the boost for just a minute, we have the Jordan 5 camos. These are originally priced at $180. So these are actually reselling for less than what I paid retail for them. So they are reselling for $170 in my size, that's a size 11 and a half. I saw some sizes that were upwards of two, and I saw some sizes that were as low as 90 bucks for a brand new pair of these. Go over the details of the sneaker. The entire upper is suede, a nice buttery suede, and it's a nice olive colored suede. It is ridiculously nice. All of the camo on the back is 3M, as well as on the tongue right here. You have the icy bottoms on the bottom right there. The Jordan 5 branding on the back right there. And overall, this shoe is just ridiculously nice. Like, this is my first pair of Jordans ever, and I was absolutely blown away with the comfort level of these when I tried them on. All this padding along the ankle right here really holds your foot down in place, and overall, the quality of this shoe, again, is just absolutely amazing. So to compare price versus quality on the Jordan 5 camo pack, I would rate these a seven out of 10 again just like the Aniki Runners because the resale price on these is actually really, really low. It's lower than retail, and this is a great, great shoe, and I highly recommend it. All right, next up and stepping back into the Adidas territory, we have the Adidas Ultra Boost 2.0 Triple White. According to the GOAT app, these are priced at $240 reselling value. So that's pretty high. I initially paid $180 for these, and they bumped up to $240 since then. So, so that's actually pretty expensive. Like, I don't know if I would be willing to pay $240 for this shoe. I mean, like, it's an Ultra Boost, so it's pretty much the most comfortable shoe in the world, but for $240, like, that's a lot of money, man. There's nothing special about this. This is an all-white sneaker. There's, there's no crazy pattern on it. There's no crazy material. It's just an all-white sneaker that has boost. So for $240, that's kind of expensive. But let's go over the details of the shoe a little bit more. The entire upper of the sneaker is Adidas Prime Knit and it's the 2.0 version again. You also have the plastic cage around it which goes all the way around into the cage here and then wraps around that way to the back. So that holds your foot in place. I don't lace mine, I like to leave mine 
loosely laced because the prime knit again on the 2.0 is enough to hold my foot in place and I just like this kind of crazy loose lacing thing. This has been my go-to white sneaker for the past year and a half now I would say just because you can wear this with anything it looks dynamite it's ridiculously comfortable to be in all day long my feet never get tired my feet never hurt when they're in boost so this is just a very very great all-around shoe so to compare price versus quality on the adidas ultra boost 2.0 for 240 dollars reselling value i would rate these a 5 out of 10 just because that is expensive for this shoe i don't know man like for it's an ultra boost it's not a yeezy it's not a jordan it's an ultra boost so for 240 dollars that's just not a good price to me that's why i rate it a five out of ten all right and last but not least we gotta finish it off with some yeez so right here i have the beluga 2.0 and then the yeezy blue tints these are the two most recent yeezy colorways that have just come out the blue tint is my favorite out of the two and really just out of the three i didn't like the frozen yellows that much i thought they were a little bit too loud just my opinion. Don't come hating at me in the comment section. But the reason that I'm putting these two together is because the resale on these two are pretty much the exact same. Let's go back in and check the Goat app one more time. All right, so right now the blue tents are reselling for $3.95 and the Beluga 2.0s are reselling for $4.40 in my size. So if you don't know this already, these two Yeezys were the highest stocked Yeezys ever so far. That's why the resale price on both of these shoes is pretty low overall. Now, I did not pay the exact same resale prices for these shoes that I have right now. Um, I actually paid similar. I paid $390 for the Blue Tents, and I paid $465 for the Beluga 2.0s. These I paid for outright. These I did through the Affirm payments. So just for the sake of saving time and the fact that these are the exact same sneaker, just in a different color, I'm going to tell you about these. Um, so let's go over the details of the shoe. The entire upper is again Adidas Prime Knit, but it's a little bit different. It is the Yeezy version of the Prime Knit, so in my opinion, it's a lot thicker than that of like an Ultra Boost. Um, you do have the stitching that runs all the way up the middle right here, up into the tongue, and then the stitching that continues on the back. You have the pull tab right here, the Supply 350 in the red print, and the entire sole underneath this outsole is, <laughs> is Boost. Um, as you can see on the bottom, the Boost pokes through there as well as right through here. The quality of these shoes is unreal. It is A1, it's ridiculous. The prime knit on this doesn't fray as much or doesn't get these little hairs all over it like the Ultra Boost does. But this is a nicer shoe in my opinion because there's just nicer materials that go into making it. So to compare price versus quality on the Yeezy V2s, I would rate these an 8 out of 10 because these two in particular, these two colorways are the highest stock Yeezy colorways ever, ever. And that means that the price on these, the resale price is stupid low. Like never did we ever as a sneaker community expect to see Yeezys that were selling for $390. Like that is just so, so low. I know a lot of people are saying that the Yeezy game is kind of dead or Adidas is dying, but I don't know, man. They might be right. I'm still hopped on the hype train because I like these shoes a lot. But to be completely honest with you, I'm probably not going to get any more. I'm really excited to see where Nike is going with Fear of God. I'm also really excited to see what else comes from Nike and Off-White and Virgil. But in the meantime, I am going to stick with my boost. Hello? New number, who dis? All right guys, that wraps it up for today's video. If you like this content, hit that subscribe button down below and you can see when I post a video next. Join the family, we've got big things coming in 2018, so stay tuned. Also hit that thumbs up button and leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.